Hi, welcome to part two of my now three part series on using the three times OSC in FL Studio. In this video, I'm going to talk about using filters and delay. Filters, in their simplest sense, are equalization devices that allow certain frequencies to pass unchanged and to cut the rest in some way. Probably the most common type of filter that you will see and use is the low pass filter. To explain, a low pass filter is a device that allows all frequencies below a certain cutoff point to pass unchanged and all the higher frequencies are cut. This sounds pretty boring, I know, but one of the magic things about filters is that you have the ability to change them in real time to create effects. The wah wah effect is one of the most common uses of filters. I've got here loaded a simple sound using just triangle waves. Oscillator 1 you can see here is operating at plus 12 semitones or an octave above normal. Oscillator 2 is at minus 12 semitones and oscillator 3 is at minus 24 semitones. So we have quite a range of sounds here from very high to very low. Let me just play you it quickly. Now let's take a look at a simple low pass filter. We're going to go to instrument properties under the INS tab and take a look at the filter section down here. Now we can choose a list of different filters in this tab here. We're just going to pick a simple low pass filter. You can see the names of the filters in the top left corner of FL Studio when you hover your mouse over them. You can't see them in this video. I'm going to pick this one. Now I'm going to play a note while slowly turning down the cutoff frequency knob here. Notice how the higher frequencies will fade away as I bring the knob down. Did you notice when I turned the knob all the way down, almost all the frequencies are gone. Ok, so let's try another filter. When you pick the very bottom one on the list, you'll notice that it has a wah wah like sound. Let's try it. To get these effects, we don't want to have to manually turn the knob all the time, we want some other way. One choice is to use an envelope to control the cutoff frequency. We can control the cutoff frequency using an envelope by going to the Cut tab in the Instrument Properties. Now to enable the envelope, we just have to tweak a parameter. Or we can turn it off and on by pressing this little switch here. The envelope and controls here are essentially the same as for the volume, but now are instead controlling the cutoff frequency of the filter instead. The one new knob is this one on the right, the modulation amount. This is fairly straightforward. It controls how much the cutoff frequency is modulated during the envelope stage. Now let's say I want a slow, wide wire that comes in every time I strike a note. All I really have to do is adjust the attack to a slow value, something like this, and the modulation amount to a high one. Now let's also put the modulation, sorry, the filter cutoff frequency to a low value to start with. Now let's try striking it out now. Another choice is to use an LFO to control the cutoff frequency. This will allow for a constant up and down change in cutoff, especially for longer held notes. Let's try it quickly. Turn off the envelope first. Now I'm going to play around with the controls. First, to engage the LFO, I'm going to adjust the amount here. Let's put it up a bit. Now let's see what we hear now. Okay, I'm going to change the cutoff frequency a bit here. Let's try adjusting the speed. You can see what's going on there. Now one of the controls you might want to take notice of when using the 3 times OSC in your music is the tempo based time button here. This will allow you to automatically set the frequency of your LFO to be in time with the tempo of your music. Click the TB button. Now you can right click on the speed knob, go to set, and here you'll have a choice of how fast it will operate which will correspond with certain beat subdivisions here.
Now you might be wondering what this knob does. It's the filter resonance knob. In some early filters, an anomaly occurred where some of the frequencies around the cutoff point were amplified. Just try using this knob to experience the effect for yourself. OK, so let's add some delay to our sounds. I've got a pretty basic no frills sort of sound loaded here. Let's go to the special tools and functions section under the FUNC or Funk tab. Here's the delay section here. Now two important parameters to start off with are the feedback knob on the far left and the echo count on the far right. The feedback knob controls how loud the echoes will be. Its default setting to the left means that the echoes are not heard at all. When set to the middle, means the echoes will be just as loud as the original note. Turning the knob further right will result in the echoes being louder than the original note. The number here on the far right represents how many echoes will be heard. Now it's important to note first that delay integrated into the 3 times OSC, it's not adding delay to the audio signal produced, but will instead trigger new notes based on these settings. Now, we're not going to hear the delay when I audition the sound using my keyboard, so I'm going to enter a note into the piano roll and play a pattern. Let's bring this up. I'm just going to enter a short note just here, and I'm going to play the pattern. I'm going to keep it playing. Now I'm going to turn the feedback note up. Not quite to the middle. Notice how the echoes get quieter as time goes on. Let's move it to the middle. Here the echoes stay the same volume. When I turn it far to the right, the echoes get louder as time goes on. I'll stop it. Now, let's adjust this one here. This will uh, increase or decrease the amount of echoes. Let's, let's increase it to 7 or 8. Now I'll play the pattern. You should hear 8 distinct echoes. Another parameter worth looking at now is the pitch knob. This will allow the echoes to get higher or lower in pitch depending on where you put this knob. Let's try setting it to a higher. Let's see how it sounds. Now lower. Another setting that's quite useful is ping pong, in which we can pan the echoes left to the right in succession and so on. Unfortunately my audio setup for recording tutorials doesn't allow me to record in stereo so I can't show you this today but I suggest you try it for yourself. One very important parameter I forgot to mention is the time knob. With this knob you can adjust how fast your echoes will be. The knob has soft snapping functions so you can easily set it to usable times. When set to the middle the echoes will fall on the quarter note Let's play along with the metronome. I encourage you to play around with the time knob and find something that works for you. Thanks for watching my tutorial. In the next part, I will go over the arpeggiator and then I will show you some of my sounds and how I've integrated them into some music.